Dimitri. How are you? Oh, hey, Beatrice. Yeah, I'm doing well. How were those hot cross buns from Grandmama Olga? They were so good, fresh out of the oven, and just the right amount of softness and sweetness. <sighs> Such a shame she would never share her recipe, just like she wouldn't share her recipe for her... Super secret special sauce. I still remember that roast from Thanksgiving. <sighs> Some nights I can still smell it in my dreams. <laughs> oh, Dimitri, you really like food, don't you? Mm-hmm. Every meal of every day, especially breakfast. A good breakfast makes for a good day. That's true. Speaking of breakfast, our story today involves breakfast as well. Ready to read it together? What story? The story of Easter. Remember where we left off on Friday? Oh, that story. So Jesus had just died, and they put his body in the tomb behind the stone. Is that right? I can't see how the story can keep going. Well, that's just the amazing thing about it. Let's jump into it. So after the death of Jesus, his body was sealed in a tomb behind a large stone. There were soldiers guarding it day and night. Hold up. Why would there be soldiers guarding a tomb? Well, you see, the people who wanted Jesus gone knew this prophecy that in three days' time, Jesus would come back to life. They didn't believe he would, but just to be safe, they wanted to have guards over it. The poor guards, they had to stand there for hours guarding a big stone. That's kind of what guards do. They watch over things. Anyway, Jesus' body was well and truly sealed in this tomb. On the morning of the third day, some of the women who knew Jesus came to the tomb. When they got there, they couldn't believe what they saw. An angel of the Lord appeared before everyone, rolled away the stone and sat on it. An angel? An angel. What about the guards? The guards were so afraid they didn't know what to do, and so were the women. But the angel said, <clears throat> Do not be afraid. You came looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen. He kind of told you it would happen. So yeah, you can go in and check if you want, but it smells in there. Anyway, you'll see him alive for yourself very soon. Go and tell the others. The women were super confused, but Jesus' body wasn't there anymore, so they went back not knowing what to do. Yeah, it must be really confusing talking to angels, huh? On the way back, Jesus himself appeared to the women. Hello there. The women were overjoyed. Jesus had come back to life just like he said he would. As in, like a ghost or a zombie? Dimitri, Jesus was fully alive, in flesh. In fact, he was more alive now than ever before because he now had a resurrected body. Re resurre Resurrected. It means that he was actually dead, but is now brought back to new life through God's power. Wow, that must have been amazing. Indeed. He later went on to show himself to his various disciples. Some of his disciples, like Thomas, didn't believe it at first. But when they heard him talk and touched his body, they knew that he had indeed come back to life. He even had breakfast hangs with Peter near the beach where he fished. Ooh, I love breakfast by the beach. You love breakfast anywhere. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so Jesus continued to spend time with his disciples, but he knew that he was going back to the Father soon, for he had accomplished the mission that God had sent him. Why couldn't he just stay around? Well, he knew that he had to go so that his disciples would finally start their mission. 
So before he left, he gave them a really important instruction. Go and make disciples of all nations. Tell them about me. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach them all the things that I taught you. And don't be afraid, because I will always be with you. And soon after that, Jesus left to go back to be with the Father, and the disciples started their mission to share the good news about Jesus with everyone else. That was epic! Jesus came back to life! No one has ever done that! Exactly! Jesus showed us that He was in fact the Son of God and that everything that He taught us was true. If we believe in Him and follow Him, He will fulfill His promise that one day we'll all have that eternal, resurrected life just like Him. Wow! So when we choose to give our lives to Jesus, we get to enjoy His promises. That's right! It's cool, isn't it? But there's more than that. Until that promise comes, we actually get our own mission, just like His disciples. Ooh, what would that be? It's a mission to share the good news, to tell people around us that Jesus died for us, came back to life to show us the promise of an eternal life where we can have a relationship with God forever. Isn't that wonderful news? I love that mission. I have so many friends I know at school who need to hear this story. But what if they don't believe me? I mean, people don't usually come back to life when they die. Well, Jesus taught us to do it with love and trust that when we share his story, his Holy Spirit will help others come to know that it's true. Our part is to make sure we tell it. Okie dokie, I can do that. I'll make sure to share it with my friends the next time I get the chance. So will I. I hear there's an Easter egg hunt at church today. Let's get there early so we don't miss out on the chocolates. <gasps> That's right. Okay, gotta go. Bye, Beatrice. Bye, Dimitri. Hey, Steeple Kids. Hey, families. Is it just me or was that the coolest story ever? Jesus came back to life. Not even death could hold him back from God's power. And that is the power of God's love for him and for all of us. Now, last time, we talked about how Jesus gave up his life so that we can have a good relationship with God again and we can find our way back to God's kingdom. What does that all mean? Well, in all of our lives, there are things that make us happy and there are things that make us sad. We might feel happy when someone says something nice to us or our grandparents give us a present or our family takes us on a very fun holiday trip. But we might feel sad when someone is mean to us or when we get sick or when someone we love is no longer with us. All of those things makes us sad. And sometimes, there's just nothing that we can do about it ourselves. You know what? The good news is that God promises a kingdom where all the things that makes us sad and all the things that make Him sad is one day going to be gone. Now God's kingdom is not a place that we go to one day. It's actually about God using His power to make everything in the whole wide world new and better than before, just like Jesus' new body. And that is a promise that God has made for us because of what Jesus has done and God showed us by raising Jesus back from the dead to tell us that that kingdom where everything is going to be new and better, that kingdom is going to come one day and we get to wait in hope for it. Until then, just like Jesus told his disciples, we get a mission for ourselves as well. We get to go and tell the good news of God's kingdom to everyone around us. God's promise of his kingdom is for everyone because God loves us all. You, me, and everyone around us. And God wants to see everyone part of his kingdom that he 
is going to bring one day. And that is the amazing good news of Easter. Well, this is our very last Beatrice and Dimitri episode. Um, we are so glad to have you along uh, in this journey, watching and learning with us. Now, while there are no more Beatrice and Dimitri episodes to come, we know that you will always have Jesus in your life. And so until next time, God bless.